We are not turning to critical values and local extrema. At the end of the previous video, we have seen this result, the extreme value CRM, stating that a continuous function on a closed interval has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on that interval. We have seen examples showing that the condition that the interval is closed is essential and that the conclusion may fail if we don't have that. It is easy to convince yourself that the condition of continuity is essential as well. From an example of that sort, for instance, where you have one discontinuity over the closed interval, where the function has, for instance, a vertical asymptote and would go to positive infinity on one side, negative infinity on the other, and therefore it has no maximum and no minimum. Now in the case where the function is continuous on a closed interval, and we know that the absolute maximum and absolute minimum occur, we want to figure out how to locate the maximum and minimum. So let's start with some pictures to try to see what kind of situation may occur. We could have something like that, where the absolute maximum and absolute minimum occur at the endpoints of the interval. We could have something like that, where in this case the minimum occurs at also at one of the endpoints, but the maximum is, um, let's call it, a turning point. And you will notice that here the tangent line is horizontal at this um, absolute maximum. We could have something like that, where um, both maximum and minimum occur in the interior of the interval, but in this case at places where we cannot even talk about the tangent line. So it looks like the possibilities are that it occurs at the endpoints of the interval or at what could reasonably be called local extrema, so what's local maximum or local minimum, which we're going to define more precisely in a second. And from this picture, it also looks like uh, at this local extrema, we have either an horizontal tangent or no tangent at all. So we're going to call local maximum a value of the function that is the greatest value that the function takes, not on the entire domain, but only on some small open interval containing C. So f of c is a local maximum if f of c is the largest value on some open interval containing c. In that case, we say that f has a local maximum at c. A local minimum is defined similarly, and we just require that it is the smallest value that the function takes, not globally, again, but only on some open interval. Now you see from this function, for instance, that a function may have many different local maxima or local minima. So in this particular case, we have four different local maxima and none of them is the absolute maximum. See that this kind of uh, absolute maximum or minimum Happen, seem to happen at places where we have either an horizontal tangent or uh, where we cannot talk about the tangent at all, as we have observed before, and that leads to the following definition. We're going to call a value in the domain of a function, a critical value for that function, if the derivative at that number is either zero, corresponding to the slope of the tangent line and therefore to a horizontal tangent, or undefined, which corresponds on the previous picture on these corner points. And now we have the following result that confirms what we suspected from the pictures. If f has a local extremum at c, then c is the critical value of f. In other words, the only places where we may have a local maximum or a local minimum are where we have a critical value, that is, where the derivative is zero or undefined. We suspected that from pictures, but we can give a more formal proof of that fact. 
So we are in the case where f has a local extremum and we want to show that c is critical. So we can assume that f prime of c exists because if it does not, then c is automatically critical. And we're going to assume that f of c is a local maximum. The proof for a local minimum would be pretty much the same. So now f prime of c exists, and by definition it is the limit as x is approaching c of the difference quotient f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c. When x is approaching c, x is close to c, and therefore we can assume that it gets um, in the open interval containing c on which f of c is the largest value. So for x sufficiently close to c, f of c is greater or equal to f of x, and therefore the difference quotient is positive or zero if x is less than c, because the top is negative, and the bottom is negative as well, and negative or zero if x is greater than c, because then the top is still negative, but the bottom is positive. Now, x close to c and less than c means that we're looking at the one-sided limit when x is approaching c from the left, and this limit is a limit of positive numbers and therefore is positive or zero. Similarly, the limit at c from the right is negative or zero, but we know that these two one-sided limits have to coincide because a regular limit exists. The only way a number that is negative or zero is equal to a number that is positive or zero is for those to be equal to zero. And therefore, the regular limit equals the two one-sided limits and is zero. Okay, so that gives us a way to uh, find local extrema in the in the sense that we know where they could potentially occur. But something to keep in mind is that not every critical value corresponds to a local extrema. For instance, let's consider the function x cubed. Then the derivative is 3x squared, and therefore its only critical value is 0 because the derivative is 0 only at 0, and the derivative is defined everywhere. But if you look at the graph of x cubed, you see that there is no local maximum or a no local minimum at 0. In other words, the converse of the CRM at the top is not true. Now let's look at some examples where we look for the critical values, starting with the function 2x squared over x plus 2. If we look at the derivative, uh, we have a quotient, so we use a quotient rule. The derivative of the top is 4x, the bottom and change x plus 2, then we subtract derivative of the bottom, which is 1, multiply by the top unchanged, all that over the bottom squared. After simplification, we obtain 2x multiplied by x plus 4, all this over x plus 2 squared. Recall that a critical value is a place where the derivative is either 0 or undefined. So here f prime is 0 at x equals 0 or x equals negative 4. So these are certainly critical values. It is tempting to conclude that negative 2 is also a critical value because f prime is not defined at negative 2 because we divide by x plus 2 squared. But it is not a critical value because the function itself is not defined at negative 2. In other words, negative 2 is not in the domain of the function and a critical value is a value in the domain of the function where the derivative is either undefined or 0. Let's look at a few more examples, starting with a function negative x squared plus 4x plus 2, and this time we'll check on the graph whether um, the corresponding critical values correspond to a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither. So in this case, the derivative is negative 2x plus 4. It is defined everywhere, so the only critical values are those that make the derivative 0. And in this case, f prime is 0 only when x is 2, so this is the only critical value. And if we draw the graph, we see that we have a local maximum at 2, which in this case, um, well, never mind what the value is. 
Moving on to the second function, x cubed plus 3x plus 1, it is again polynomial, so the derivative is going to be defined everywhere, so that the only critical values are the zeros of the derivative. The derivative is 3x squared plus 3, and you see that it is at least 3, because this is 3 plus something positive. Therefore, it is never 0, and as a consequence, there is no critical value, and therefore no local extrema, because local extrema can only occur at critical value. In the third case, we have the function x to the fourth plus 6x squared minus 2. It's again polynomial, so again we are looking for the zeros of the derivative. The derivative is 4x cubed plus 12x, which factors out as 4x multiplied by x squared plus 3. The second factor, x squared plus 3, is at least 3 and therefore doesn't take the value 0. Therefore, f prime of x is 0 only at 0, which is the only critical value. If we sketch the graph of the function, we get something like that and we see that at 0 there is a local minimum, which in this case uh, turns out to be negative 2. Let's turn to the function x squared minus x plus 4 divided by x minus 1. It's a quotient, so we use a quotient rule to differentiate. Derivative of the top is 2x minus 1. We multiply by the bottom. Then we subtract the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, multiply by the top, and divide all that by the square of the bottom. After simplification, we get x squared minus 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 1 squared. The top factors out as x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3. Therefore, f prime of x is 0 if x is negative 1 or x is equal to 3. Again, even though f prime is not defined at x equal 1, x equal 1 is not a critical value because f itself is not defined at x equal 1. If we sketch the graph of this function, here is what it looks like. And you see that um, at negative 1, we have a local minimum. And at 3, we have a local maximum. The last function is x to the 7 third minus 28 x to the 1 third. Differentiating this function using the power rule, we get 7 third x to the 7 third minus 1, which is 4 third, minus 28 multiplied by 1 third x to the 1 third minus 1, which is negative 2 third. So that's not a very pretty thing, but we can factor out for instance, 7 third multiplied by x to the negative 2 third. If I do that, the first term, x to the 4 third, um, if I factor out of it x to the negative 2 third, I get x to the 6 third, right? Because if I multiply x to the negative 2 third by x to the 6 third, I get x to the 4 third. Of course, x to the 6 third is just x squared, so we obtain 7, 7 third x to the negative 2 third multiplied by x squared minus 4, which factors further as x minus 2x plus 2. Now, the function f was defined on the entire real line, but f prime is not defined at 0, because x to the negative 2 third is a negative power of, of the variable, you cannot plug x equals 0 in this. This is 1 over x to the 2 third. That's not defined at 0. So, 0 is a critical value, not because the derivative is 0 at 0, but because the derivative is undefined at 0. On the other hand, 2 and negative 2 are also critical values because the derivative is 0 at this point. I had some problems with my grapher. But roughly speaking, this is what the graph would look like. And we would have a local maximum at negative 2, a local minimum at 2, and no extremum at 0. Now you should turn to the next video to see how to find absolute extrema.